Hi everybody, this is Anne. We've done lots of videos experimenting with pottery attachments like handles, feet, and rims. In this video, we'll explore a variety of hand building techniques to form creative vase collars. I thought it'd be interesting to throw a closed form on the wheel for the body of the vase and then come up with unique ways to create their crowning glory. The first thing I did was to throw three tall but tapering closed forms on the wheel. Jim and I addressed this topic in the video called 10 Tips on How to Throw Closed Form Pottery. If you'd like more information on how to do this, click on the link above. The first one I'm calling the slouched coil. I started by rolling out a coil about three quarters of an inch in diameter, and then I cut it down to the height that I wanted the collar to be. In this case, I cut it about an inch and a half tall. Next I located my 3 8 inch dowel rod. I centered it at the top of the coil and began to push it straight down about a half inch and then pulled it back out. I then turned it over and repeated the same step. This time I pushed the dowel all the way through to the other side. I began to roll the coil so that it stretched out to a slightly wider diameter. I have a ribbed mat that we've used in many of our other videos. I thought I'd add this texture to the coil by rolling it over the top just one revolution. I wet my fingers and softened and rounded the top edge of the collar. Now for the fun part. I began to pounce the collar on the table and turn it a quarter turn in between each pounce, so the foot of the collar began to buckle. This is what causes the slouch. Now you can keep pouncing to get the look that you want. I didn't want anything too crazy. I used my finger to push the bottom edge inward so that it would fit on top of the closed form snugly. I cut an opening in the top of the form, then centered the collar over the opening and attached it. Now here's one I made previously, where it's already bone dry and I've decorated it. I painted squiggles in the lines extending down from the slouchy lines of the collar, so the collar and the body lines mirror each other. The next collar is the extruded tiki hut. For this one, I started out with a block of clay. I used my rolling pin to smooth out the top of the block. I'm going to use a Diamond Core R6 hand extruder for this next step. I set the tool at one end of the block and pulled it through to the other side to form an extruded blank. I repeated this step to make three of them. I then wet my fingers and flattened the edges of the strips slightly. I covered each strip with plastic wrap and placed the rib mat over the top of each strip so the ribs were horizontal to them. I gently pushed the mat down over the strip so it would impress the clay but not flatten it down. Now that's the look I was going for. I had this one inch dowel rod to form my collar around. I stood it upright and wrapped the first strip around it so that it overlapped its edge. I then cut through both ends and removed the excess pieces of clay. I scored and slipped both ends and attached them. I used my needle tool to mark a texture line back into that attached area. I then wet my finger and compressed the bottom of the new collar to strengthen the attachment. I then took the second strip and wrapped that around the dowel rod, slightly overlapping the first strip.
I overlap the end of the strip and cut the excess clay away. I then scored and slipped the overlapped area and attached the second strip. To attach the two strips together, I pushed my needle tool down into each impressed groove where they overlapped. As for the top of the strip, I used my fingers to gently push down along the rim. This action eventually curved the top edge to fit snugly against the dowel. I then removed the dowel. Actually, this would make a really nice little opening for the vase or a bottle, but I decided to add one more strip to the top of it. I placed a straight edge over the top of the third strip and cut it in half. I want that third strip to fit inside the opening. I curled it around to form a circle using that top opening as my guide for the size that I needed. I cut away the excess clay and scored and slipped it together. I scored and slipped the top edge of the collar and the bottom edge of the new piece. I then fit that new piece in the top hole and stretched it out along the bottom edge so that it stuck in place. I pressed my needle tool in each ribbed impression to strengthen the bond between the two strips. Again, I centered the collar at the top of the closed form and attached it. Here's one that I made previously that's bone dry and I've decorated it. Each strip is a little wonky, not perfectly symmetrical. I did this on purpose and then added the wavy lines at the bottom of the vase to echo the wonkiness. I just love that. Finally, I'm going to try some weaving. Jim's named this collar the Chain Link Pagoda. I rolled out a quarter inch slab, ribbed it, and then cut it into four strips. I wanted the strips thinner to the width of a paint stick, so I placed a paint stick next to each strip and rolled the strip so it would thin out to that width. I ribbed them well and then placed plastic wrap over the strips and textured it with the rib mat. This time the lines are placed vertically. I then place the paint stick over the slab and cut around it. I wet my fingers and softened the top edges. I turned it over and repeated this along the bottom side edges. I cut the first strip in half and flipped the sections over texture side down. I placed one section over the top of the other so they formed a cross. I gently folded one of the flaps over the top strip. I was keeping my eye on that tight crease for cracking. I cut the strip in the center and removed the excess clay. I then slowly and gently folded the second side 
to butt up against the first edge. I cut the excess clay away. Next I folded the other strip over top of those and cut away the excess clay. I repeated that for the other end of the strip so that now I had something similar to a chain link. My clay started to show cracking along the tight curves. I wet my fingers and worked the clay back together like this. As it dries, you can work the texture back into the impressions with your needle tool. I also wet my fingers and erased the connection point where the two ends meet. I repeated these steps for the two of the other strips to create two more chain links. Here I am cleaning up those impression marks. If I had more time, I would do this step at leather hard. But as I have a deadline for the video, this'll do. Looking back, if I had started with clay that was a little wetter, I may have avoided the problem with cracking along the curves. I slipped the top of each link and stacked them together so the lines altered and I created a woven appearance. With the last strip, I changed my mind. I balled up the clay and rolled it to create a small coil instead. I got my rib mat back out and rolled the coil on top of the mat one revolution. I curled the coil around and cut the excess ends off. I scored and slipped the clay together to form the small ring. I then placed it over top of the chain and attached it. I took a dowel rod and pushed it about a half inch down into the center of that ring. I turned the chain over centered the dowel and pushed it straight through the top to create the opening. Again, I centered this over the top of the closed form and attached it. The squiggles at the end of each of the extending lines mimic the lines of the woven section of the piece. It kind of looks like a top knot. Experimenting with the collars of a vase can add such a unique aspect to a plain vase. There are so many different hand building techniques that the possibilities for different looks are endless. I'd like to thank the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to support our channel and become part of the team, click the super thanks or the buy me a coffee button. See you next time in the studio.